Well, welcome back. We're going into Wheeler's most excellent textbook, and we're looking at chapter 12. We're going to do a series of three videos exploring this particular chapter, and this is the first of those three videos. So what we're going to do is start by looking at security risk reviews here, the lesson objectives that we're going to talk about during this particular chapter. We're going to start by doing that kind of intro and talk about what a workflow is, how do we implement it, and then very briefly, actually very briefly, talk about how NIST provides a framework for certification and accreditation, and how does that work uh, within a business setting. So let's get into that first part there, get some definitions underway. Security risk reviews, that's that process of evaluating and addressing non-compliance with policies and standards. Yes, it's true. You write it down and everybody doesn't do it. There are people that are non-compliant. you got to have a program that goes out there and looks at People that are being non-compliant, have a little chat with them and get them on board. As you're doing that, while you know the uh, uh, the threat vulnerability management program is looking at emerging threats, this security risk review program is going to identify and address more strategic issues and systemic uh, root causes. Now, people that are not complying with policies or standards may be doing that because they don't understand your silly standard or policy, so it may not be their fault. But you got to pay attention to it. These security risk reviews is what we're going to focus on in this particular chapter. So just think of it as a gap analysis. You're going to list all your active standards and policies out there, and you put all those discrepancies in that second column. It's like an audit without judgment, but there is judgment because you're going to go back and try to address those uh, discrepancies and make sure that people are following the standards and policies. Um, when you go back and look at this, uh, the cookie book approaches that we've done for the last 10 years or so just haven't worked out. And uh, it is better than nothing, uh, but it doesn't reflect how the real world works. And so what you need to do is go back out, do these security risk reviews, look at the standard, determine if you can do things that meet the intent of the standard, um, do things that improve the current state and make this where it is a constantly improving system. So if you're looking at these discrepancies that are out there, you've got four little bullet points there that address what you should be looking at as you're going through uh, these particular uh, discrepancies, making sure do you understand the technical and the process-related vulnerabilities and threats. If so, can you make some changes that make it better, or is it going to make it worse? Are the discrepancies out there not meeting the intent of the standard? And could additional controls help mitigate any risk, make it easier for your customers, and lower um, that uh, residual risk that exists within a particular system? Another way of doing this is to look at the standard in the context of the policy and determine if proposed changes meet the intent. If it's yes, say yes. Don't say no unless you're forced to say no. As you're doing this, you're going to use these uh, the, the same uh, variables that we've used all along. Sensitivity, likelihood, and severity, although occasionally we call severity uh, impact. All right, well, guess what? Believe it or not, that brings us to the end of this introductory video looking at Chapter 12 of Wheeler's most excellent textbook, Security Risk Management. What we're going to do in the next video is pick this thing up and start looking at workflows associated with the security risk review. So keep on studying, keep on learning, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.